Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a show today that will take your breath away. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Well, Robbie, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis is with us to discuss some new developments out of Ukraine, and we'll discuss a status update on Edward Snowden. But first, as Hurricane Ian continues to track toward Florida, The Hill reported yesterday that the White House and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are working together in their response to the hurricane expected to hit Florida hard in the coming days. However, according to Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, the two haven't actually spoken. She also insisted that their political differences are not an issue. Here's DeSantis on some of the efforts that are ongoing in Florida. The Florida National Guard has activated 5,000 Florida Guardsmen, as well as 2,000 additional Guardsmen from Tennessee, Georgia, and North Carolina that have been activated to help. We have also have five urban search and rescue teams that are activated. We have Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission mobilized and ready to support needed efforts. And of course, the U.S. Coast Guard is also willing and able to assist in both preparation and response. Yeah, I mean, it's good to hear that uh, <laughs> the people in our government can put aside their pointless partisan bickering uh, when there is a real emergency on hand. And this sounds like a real emergency. This sounds like a very serious um, storm. If you I've just started looking at the kind of uh, coverage of it, it looks like it could be very bad. So, so yes, the, the, let's put the politics aside uh, for a few minutes, please. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to see, you know, I'm old enough to remember some, you know, sort of heartwarming moments from uh, emergencies past. I also remember uh, some moments where bipartisanship reflected negatively because of the partisan rancor between the parties. When folks did come together over these kind of moments, it was, oh, Chris Christie, why are you uh, patting Obama on the back or shaking his hand or whatever, oh, you know, sure. those kind of moments. So I, I'm hopeful that that is not what emerges out of this uh, crisis in Florida. And I'm also really interested to hear whether or not this spurs a different kind of conversation about what to do about the increasing frequency of these kinds of weather events. Well, meanwhile, Hurricane Ian strengthened into a Category 3 storm early this morning. It's currently over western Cuba and is moving north into the Gulf of Mexico for what uh, looks like it's going to be a damning strike on Florida. The Washington Post reports that the Tampa Bay region, which boasts nearly 700 miles of shoreline and more than 3 million residents, is one of the most vulnerable places in the U.S. to face severe flooding if a hurricane of this magnitude were to hit this area directly. Yesterday, the Tampa Bay mayor raced residents for the severity of the hurricane. Let's watch that. This is going to be a storm like we have not seen in the past. Unless there's something that changes drastically, even a if it tracks on the most westerly path, we're still going to have high winds and we're going to have storm surges. Hmm. Mandatory and voluntary evacuations totaling over 300,000 people have been ordered along Florida's west coast. And according to the Fox Forecast Center, the storm surge could reach as high as 10 feet along portions of Florida's coast. This video shows huge lines of cars waiting for free sandbags in St. Petersburg, a city on Florida's Gulf Coast and part of the Tampa area, as residents brace for the storm. Mm. There have been some evacuations uh, ordered, I think, for certain counties and then voluntary evacuations uh, for others. Certainly, if you, you know, if you can get out of the area, um, it, that sounds like a good, a good plan for right now because it's going to be a, a very massive storm at the, in, in, in the the best case scenario, like, it, like she was yeah. saying, is going to be a very bad storm. Storm the likes of which we've not seen before yeah. is a huge headliner yeah. for a state like Florida, which has certainly seen its fair share. Right. I believe the last hurricane to break, uh, to make it to the to land in Florida was uh, like three or four years ago now. Yeah. I can't remember which one. They all run together. The names for, you don't, I'm sure they don't if you live there. Sure. I'm sure you remember exactly where you were when, you know, what, whichever one it was struck. Um, and then there was a more recent one that hit Louisiana, mm. um, which I don't recall the name of either. Mm. Um, you know, uh, us in our safety, our safe enclaves in the, r relatively safer enclaves in the north, although obviously hurricanes have hit places like New York and Virginia as well. And Certainly. Uh, we, and might, we might be getting some light rain eventually up here, but nothing and not even close to what they're going to see in, uh, in the panhandle. State. Yeah, well, we'll keep you posted on what's going on in Florida as those evacuations continue. And we hear up next, Robbie, that you have some exclusive reporting in your radar. I do. I'm looking forward to that as well. Stick around. <laughs> 